A lot of cancer camps are started with the idea that we want to offer a normal camp experience, but we want to offer to kids who ordinarily wouldn't get that experience without special support. And so what's most important for an oncology camp is to provide a normal experience, but in an environment where medical needs can be addressed if a child needs them. We also find that the kids who go home after camp are often more willing to comply with their medical uh, instructions, they're more willing to take their medicine, uh, you know, they're more willing to go through the tough parts of getting treated for cancer. And there are a lot of tough parts because they know that uh, camp is there to support them. At the heart of COCA is its people and the people who come and they share their experiences, they share their knowledge, they share the best practices and define the best practices within pediatric oncology camping. Unlike some fields out there, it's not competitive. It's not about trying to outdo one another. It's trying to raise everyone up to the level of best practices. Kids who are being treated with cancer just want to be treated like kids and they want to feel like normal kids. And so when they come to camp and they're surrounded by activities that are considered normal and they see other kids with cancer enjoying those activities, it spurs them to, to not only try new things but also to start feeling like a normal kid again. And so by the time they leave, you know, we've had parents who said, I, you know, I sent a sick or an angry young kid to camp and you sent my child back. What happens at camp is this magic that allows kids to experience nature, to revitalize souls, to learn strengths that they didn't know they had, to just be kids. I can't even explain what camp has done for me. Like, is, there's nothing like being in a place where you go show up and you're not different from everybody else. They feel very different from the kid that they used to be, and they start to feel sometimes like they are incapable at the job of being a child. They don't know how to do that anymore. And in a setting where we can create opportunities for them to be successful and get their confidence back, get their sense of independence back a little bit, it can have an amazing impact on uh, just the way they view the world and how the cancer is impacting them and they can see past it um, toward a future when that is gone. And sometimes in the early stages of the disease it's really hard to do that. I was diagnosed with paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobin area and I think I had five rounds of chemo but it was really strong chemo. I had ATG, I think that's like some type of rabbit medicine and then I had a bone wheel transplant and I had two rounds of radiation. Everybody understands you without having to know your story. It's like a safe haven really so you can Choose to tell everybody what you're here for. You can choose to keep it a secret. You, but nobody comes out and is like, "What's wrong with you?" It's nice to be in a place where you feel so normal. It was crazy because like, you'd see someone that have one, and then you'd see people that had like 15 to 20 rounds, and they will be like, "You're lucky because you got five. So as as a mom. Um, you see your child go through treatment and you see what happens to them physically. Um, they get weaker, they lose their hair, uh, they're out of activities. So uh, emotionally and socially, um, everything changes. And when they come to camp, they get a piece of their childhood back. It's the fact that they're empowered, um, that they feel that they can do things again. Um, they also feel a great sense of belonging that other people who they're surrounded by just get it. The friendships that are started here and uh, both between the campers and each other and also between the campers and the counselors uh, are a real inspiration and I think a, a driving force behind uh, kids wanting to get better. You know, medicine can only take you so far, but I think uh, your, the, the health of your spirit has a lot to do with it. Kids who have a variety of different kinds of illnesses, we have kids at various stages of treatment or children who are off treatment, and so trying to meet the needs of all the children um, so that everyone gets kind of individualized care that they deserve, um, but in a large kind of unpredictable environment. We make sure that we do everything possible, whether you know we have to move around chemos a little bit or we bring the chemo here. If they need blood transfusions, if they need labs checked, whatever they need to do, we can do it here. And sometimes we have to take them back to the hospital to give the blood products and bring them right back. But we try to keep things as normal as possible to ensure they have the most normal camp experience that, that 
every other kid would hopefully have the opportunity to have. Um, we try to think ahead as a team, as a medical team, um, about all the different things we might run into that we can do at camp um, and have all of that with us there. Uh, for instance, was yesterday, um, we had a kiddo who came in and was overheated, we assumed was dehydrated, um, down some Gatorade, you do all those things out at camp that are regular things to do, blood pressure still low. So now we have to hook them up and give them IV fluids. We push IV fluids, blood pressure gets a little bit better and then sinks again. You know, we finally landed on his adrenals are not responding the way they should when he feels bad. Our bodies naturally put out steroids and he doesn't have that extra reserve and capacity to do that. And so we gave him steroids, he finally responded um, and he was able to stay at camp. But all of that happened in the background. We just did it quietly as a team. He felt better. By the end of the day, he went back to his cabin. I was glad they're there. Uh, they did what they had to do. And within, let's say, about 30 minutes to an hour, I felt much better. The siblings are a group that has incredible needs um, because, uh, not through anyone's fault, but just because of the circumstances, that the family's resources of all kinds are so tied up in the disease and the treatment and the needs that are directly related to that. And that has to be their first priority. There's no choice about that. So that there's less of everything left over for those other kids. So the siblings often feel like they woke up one morning and the world has forgotten that they exist. When Becca was initially diagnosed, my son was 10, and it wasn't until he was 18 and graduated from high school that he, he wrote this paper, and basically, it was like getting into college paper, and basically it, it was my little sister got cancer, and I became an inconvenience. I was like, oh crud. So a year later, his sister wrote her college entrance paper, and hers was basically, my little sister got cancer, and my brother saved me. And it goes on to talk about the way that her brother saved her was that she didn't want to go to camp, to the brothers and sisters camp, the sibling camp. And Drew helped to introduce Haley to this whole family that truly has become family. I think it's having kids that you can relate to and it's just, it helps everyone the, between the counselors and the uh, campers. Uh, a lot of times when people hear that they might be working with kids who have what could be a terminal illness, they think doom and gloom and um, oh my gosh, it's going to be scary. The reality is that none of us know from day to day what the next day is going to hold, um, but we have a choice of what we're going to do with today. And the kids who come to camp are choosing to live and celebrate life. And for a counselor to go with that as their goal and their attitude, uh, I think is the most important thing that they can do to prepare for their time at camp. Most of them know what you've been through, but a lot of them still kind of learn, but they do a great job. The kids see you as docs initially. Um, when they experience you as a doc at camp, they see you in a different setting. I'm sitting here in a t-shirt. I may be sitting in the dunking booth. I may take a pie in the face. I may get into a very kidding relationship. And we have some of that at the hospital, but it's in a different setting and it feels different. And so they get to see their medical team as people, um, as fun people, as people who enjoy doing some of the same things they do. And so it gives them a little bit of a different relationship with you at work that's a really a very healthy thing. Year after year, there's often a wait list for doctors and nurses to come out here and to be able to, to spend this week with the children. And it's something that, you know, most of us take a week of our vacation, our personal time off to be able to come here and to have this experience with the, with our patients because it's so important. You know, we, we got here earlier this week and one of our charge nurses who's been coming for several years, she says, I've been waiting for this. I need this. We absolutely need this. All of us need this. I'm, I couldn't do what I do without Camp Discovery and this experience in, the, in this time with our patients because it allows us all to see a different side of each other and it's, it's just incredible. It is tough to know that some of these kids just won't be back, um, but we don't look, we, we don't live our life like that. We don't live camp that way. We live as if every child is going to return. Uh, last year, 
we were told three or four kids would not be back the next summer, and yet they are here this summer. Friday when the buses pull out, it's always very emotional because you don't ever know what kids are coming back, what kids aren't, um, what kids make it and what kids don't. It's just very hard, but the gist of everything is that we gave them the time of their lives here. That's what our goal is, is to just let them have fun, have a blast, and as a camp kid, I always looked forward to summer, because, not because I was out of school, but because I got to come to camp. I think it's important that people understand just how important this camp is to some of these kids. Um, I think that there are a lot of them who this is the thing that gets them through the year. In the 35 years we've been along, uh, we've never had a story more dramatic than last summer when a little girl uh, who was sent home in July, early July, with the news that her body was shutting down from her from her transplant rejection, and she had about 48 hours to live, and camp was still five weeks away, and so she told her parents during a quiet moment that uh, I don't think I'm supposed to die yet because camp is coming, and so her parents notified us and said, "Is it going to be possible to get her to camp?" And we committed to whatever it takes, we will get her to camp. And so she kept hanging on and hanging on and hanging on. And when she came to the week of camp, uh, she rallied. And but to the point that when she got home, her doctor said her lab tests were coming back normal again and they couldn't figure out why. And so she's back this year with us, uh, a year and a half later, and she's walking again. She's eating full, solid foods. She's, her, you know, her doctors can't explain it, but they said that uh, she, she had a miraculous turnaround and it was camp that led her to that. Mm -hmm.